Barnegat Bay in southeastern New Jersey is 96 square miles of brackish water separating the mainland from the sandy barrier islands that have made the Jersey Shore famous. It's a body of water that is nothing less than the beating heart of its community, central to the lives of people and wildlife alike. Barnegat Bay is a gem. It's along the Atlantic Flyway, so it's really important to migratory birds. It's serving as a fish nursery for a lot of commercially and recreationally important fisheries. But it's just serenity to us to relax, enjoy the beauty. For the folks who've lived here for generations, it's been their home, it's been their recreation, it's been their livelihood. Watermen, baymen, people who made their livelihoods and had for generations off the abundance of the bay. But generations of development by commercial interests, homeowners and vacationers, have left their toll on the bay, turning what was once rich wilderness into a place that is as ecologically fragile as it is beautiful. Sixty years ago, you would have found pine forest and holly trees, thousands and thousands of acres of salt marsh, oyster reefs, and birds that were migrating through from the Arctic down to South and Central America. Starting in the 1950s, real estate development found the shore and found Barnegat Bay. Not understanding the ecology, they proceeded to sell it off, dredging sand out of the bottom of Barnegat Bay and throwing it on top of these irreplaceable natural features. And of course, in all of that, we lost the natural features. The most dramatic consequences of this development have been loss of shoreline. By over-harvesting oysters, over-dredging underwater structures, and draining wetlands to build houses and businesses, the natural systems that protect the land from rising water have been lost. And as a result, the sandy beaches that attracted people to the bay have all but disappeared. The bay's moving into the land, it's taking the land away. And people built pretty close to the water here to enjoy it, you know, the recreation of it, maybe even the natural piece of it, whatever they came for, they wanted to be waterfront on the bay. Well, now, the waves are at their back door. The erosion has been terrible. I mean, in the beginning, we lost a f couple of feet here, a couple of feet there, but now it's just unbelievable. It's not even the Sandies, it's the Nor'easters that we get that really are uh, detrimental to our property. When we get high tides, we're, we're getting water in the streets now. You know, not like, you know, we're not talking storms, we're talking regular high tides. So when we have a storm on top of the high tide, you know, you, you have this much water in the street. So it's frightening, it's real, it's imminent, and something needs to be done about it. But now, a coalition of partners led by the American Literal Society have mobilized to rebuild some of these natural systems. This community has lost an extreme amount of shoreline since the 90s, let alone since the 70s. And in order to address these huge issues, we really have to almost reinvent and create a new process. There's a strong desire to harden our shoreline, but lots of times that's only a temporary solution. And so this project is a nature-based solution where we're using oysters and shells and we're trying to create a natural erosion barrier while also providing an important ecosystem for the community. So this is a, a very unique living shoreline project. It's the largest of its kind in New Jersey right now where we're incorporating breakwaters and oysters. If we can establish these reefs, because we know this water is going to keep on Rising, that water level is going to rise, uh, those reefs can kind of keep up with that because they build upon each other. We can restore acres of reef. The cages that we made ourselves hold about seven bushels of recycled restaurant shell or shell that was purchased from like a commercial processing plant. Then we're putting oysters in the reefs. Uh, we're seeding it with over 70 million oyster larvae. As those grow, they're going to filter water over time, and that filtered water will clean the water. It's an effort the local community has rallied around, giving their time to be a part of rebuilding these reefs. So today, it's a, a, it's a volunteer appreciation event for all the volunteers that helped us do this project. They did created 184 segments of a reef. It extends the entire length of the town. These uh, reefs, they break down wave energy. So it becomes a lot quieter, and we can have things like eelgrass established, which is really important to small fish and things like that. Um, also, it breaks down waves too. So now we're really slowing the erosion rate of the shoreline here for, with this project. So today is to say thank you. We're gonna to come to the finish line with this together. American Literal Society is a huge leader 
and bringing the community together and we're a very proud partner and hopefully um, we can bring other communities together to develop these projects in other locations. This is a method that we've proven that works and we could do it sustainably every year. The society will communicate their successes here and will help other external partners, including U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, replicate this design for the benefit of um, the, the whole Barnegat Bay, New Jersey, and, and elsewhere where this tactic might be successful to meet conditions. We can build a viable living reef in southern Barnegat Bay where we have high salinity, high tidal flow, in an area that needs a, a thriving reef. For me, it's a wonder. It's a history of, of what Barnegat Bay meant to the area. And learning that history, automatically, I want to do what I can to try and save that for the future, for our kids and grandkids and so on.